Now, the FAA is taking a zero-tolerance approach. Unruly passengers face potential criminal charges, fines of up to $35,000, and banned for life by the airlines. FAA Chief Steve Dixon, a former pilot and senior VP at Delta Airlines. We've got to follow uh, crew instructions on the aircraft, yeah. and it is not permissible, and we will not tolerate interfering with a flight crew in the performance of their safety duties, oh. period. Period. End of story. Uh, so listen, listen, if you don't want to wear a mask, there's one surefire way that you could speed that up, and that's go get vaccinated. Now, the reason why I'm telling you what incentivizes people to go get vaccinated, and I point out to you that Democrats want to get paid, Republicans want to be told that they don't need to wear a mask anymore, that they can fly on an airplane, they don't have to pick fights, they don't have to open windows, they don't have to climb out on the wing, they don't have to spit in babies' mouths, they don't have to, you know, drive, uh, you know, 20, 20 hours because they got kicked off of the only airline that services their Alaska city, okay, uh, it's just from Anchorage. So sad, these are such sad sacks, such angry, ugly, dangerous people spitting in a child's mouth what is wrong with you and what's with the bringing of your own alcohol on board a plane i mean are you gonna you people are gonna screw it up for everybody they're gonna ban alcohol on all flights because of people like you they are you won't even be able to have a little wine to settle your nerves on an airplane because people are abusing the privilege and they are acting out and acting out and you know just ban them for life so guess what we have to do now taxpayers guess what we have to do we have to now pay for more air marshals to police the skies the friendly skies are not friendly anymore why because americans who are republicans who feel that they have a right to intimidate they have the right to get in your baby's face and spit in its mouth i don't know in the, they, they're they urinating in the airplane. They're literally, why not just take a dump already? I mean, disgusting, vile. So we have to get those people vaxxed. They ha and, and it seems like when I, when I was looking at this UCLA survey of 75,000 people, uh, that Republicans respond not to the message, oh, it'll protect you, no. Not definitely not to the message that it'll protect others, oh, hell no. No, they responded to the message that they won't have to cover their traps, okay? That they won't have to wear a mask. That's what motivated them. Only 18% of them changed their minds at all, but at least it was 18% that changed their minds. 35% of Democrats changed their minds about getting a vaccine when you said you'd pay them. Somebody's very good at uh, capitalism and someone just sucks as a human <laughs> i'll let you figure it out and because of the anger that is just permeating throughout the gop culture in this here country the gop is literally going to try and suppress the votes of the optimistic but you see here's the thing here's the catch and it's always something with them because they're not too bright they're going to suppress their own voters they're going to deprive their own voters of easy voting, of access to their ballot. And that's just going to make their voters even angrier and even uglier. So let's just try and, uh, you know, educate everybody about the places where voting, the cancel culture, right? They're canceling voters. That's what Ted Cruz and his ilk are all about. They're gonna talk a big, big game about cancel culture and wokeness, cause you know, being awake is, is, is a condition in the Republican, uh, you know, crowd. You don't wanna be awake. You don't wanna be aware of your surroundings, oh no. And you certainly, wanna talk about cancel culture as your party is canceling your ability to vote uh-huh makes no sense because it's nonsense you understand okay good so anyway they're going to restrict voting uh florida's already passed this uh, crazy law you know arizona's going about their own thing georgia did and in the melee of voter suppression 
their voters are going to be suppressed too. Uh, now, here, here's how bad it is. Here in Florida, when uh, Ron Death Sentence decided that he was going to, uh, you know, pass voter suppression laws, even though Trump won Florida and we didn't have one single problem with voting or counting ballots, not, a, not an issue here. There was, it was a perfect election. So, hey, let's change it. It was so stupid. But, of course, what they, what they are doing is making you reapply this time for your absentee ballot if you, if you want to vote that way. And, quite frankly, people here are not used to having to do that. But that's what they want you to have to do if you want to access an absentee ballot or a, you know, a, a mail-in ballot. Uh, this time for 2022. Well, their voters are going to get screwed because their voters, uh, they don't know about this. And unintentionally, they're making it harder for their voters to, to vote. Now, their voters here in Florida tend to be seniors. And seniors are not keeping up with this news, okay? And so, and military, also uh, members of the military, they always got their ballots mailed to them too. Well, that's changing. And those are their voters. Those are the GOP aligned constituencies. So that's, this is how bad it got. It got so bad that one former state party official actually said, well, can we exempt senior citizens from having to apply for their mail-in ballot? Can we exempt the military members from having to apply for their mail-in ballot? And the answer came back, no, because it raises equal protection issues. You have to treat all voters the same, even though we know that's a joke, right? You can't, uh, you know, legislate something like that and put it on paper like that uh, because it violates equal protection. So now you're going to have seniors who have health problems or seniors that just don't go out anymore. You know, they don't uh, drive or if they do uh, go out, they're driven or, you know, they they walk or whatever it is that, they, you know, and they don't know that the law has changed and they just won't get their mail in ballot. And they'll sit there and go, I didn't get mine, so I didn't vote. I know this because I had to work so hard to make sure, because my mom moved from my house to her apartment three miles from my house this year, and she didn't get her mail-in ballot, and it took an act of Congress pretty much for me to get that ballot to her. Never came by mail. It never did. We had to go and get it. Now, that's when you have me as a daughter. My mother really wanted to vote, so, you know. But honestly, if she didn't have me, I really don't think that my mother would have voted. You see what I'm saying over here? But they know this. The Republican Party knows this. And the reason why they're still going down this really bad road is because they, th they know that they have fewer voters than Democrats do. And so if theirs have barriers placed in their way, they're betting that fewer voters for them will still mean a win for them because fewer Democrats. That's what they're betting on. That's how poorly they are. That's how poor they do at Governing, solving problems, offering solutions, making things better. No, they have no ideas except to get everybody riled up and angry. It's all they have. It's all they have. And so that's what they're going with. They're going with voter suppression and riling up their base with anger, with anger and, and hostility and, uh, you know, whatever, racism, I guess. Because... I, I just I cannot believe they made this uh, this deal with the devil that they they are willing to suppress their own voters. They're, they're willing to restrict their own voters from uh, having access to their ballots because they believe the numbers. They actually said, well, we'll lose some of ours, but we'll lose more of theirs. That's what their conclusion was. This is how they solve problems. Let me tell you something right freaking now. If we can get this infrastructure package through, if we can actually create 
jobs for people that, like me, people that just pretty much graduated uh, high school, never went to college kind of a thing, if we can create good paying opportunities for people like me, we can poach those very angry people out of the Republican Party and get them to become Biden Republicans. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.